Hello, everyone, and welcome to chapter six, the graph of a function. So in this chapter, we will learn how to construct the graph of a function defined algebraically, so defined by an equation. And to do that, we'll be using, of course, the domain of that function. We're going to use the important limits of that function, and we're going to use the sign tables of the first and the second derivative and see how we can extract some visual information from those sign tables. So first section, the first derivative and its link between where a function is going up and going down. So we're going to start first with a bunch of definitions that we're going to be able like to see visually. And this is something I really like to do. So I like to introduce definitions and then I like to practice those definitions on functions that are defined visually so that we could so that we can really have like a good feel of what's going on visually so that when we compute these things we have some experience with the visual representation of those computations. So first definition like what is a global maximum and a global minimum of a function. So global min global max is it's no, it's no big deal. Um, the function has a global max over its domain. So if there's a point in the domain that I call C, such that the function reaches its highest value at C. So if there's a point in the domain where the function is having its highest Y value, this is an example of a global maximum for that function. Maybe there's more than one, okay? But if there, for any point where um, F at that point is greater or equal than any other point, then it's a global maximum. A function has a global minimum, okay, a global minimum if there's a point in the domain C such that the function is at its lowest. So f of C is less or equal than f of x for all x in the domain of, um, of f. So global min global max is to some extent what we really want to compute. And actually computing global maximums and global minimums is what's called optimizing a function. So when you say optimize a function, you want to know where is this function reaching its absolute maximum or where is this function reaching its absolute minimums. But in terms of uh, computations, this is quite difficult. And to get there, we need like... A, a kind of a subclass of maximums and minimum call it local max and local min. So the next definition to some extent is way more important because it will be way more easier to compute. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's easier. So what is a local maximum and a local minimum? So we say that a function has a local maximum. If there's a point C in the domain such that f of C is greater or equal than f of x, but just around an open interval containing C. So not everywhere, but if all your neighbors around you are below you, okay, then you're a local max. Maybe there's some neighbors or some part of the graph that go way above you, but if locally, so if around a small interval around C containing C, um, all the values of the functions are less or equal than C, then we say that this function has a local max. And a local min is the same idea. So it's a point in the domain such that the function is smaller or equal than f of x for all point x inside an open interval connecting C. So it's really just points where when you look at your, the labors on the left side and the right side, if all the neighbors are above you, then like just around it, you have a local minimum. The best way to fully understand these um, definition is by, of course, looking at an example. So the first example, let's find local minimums, local maximums, global maximums, and global minimums of the following function. So here, what we have is a graph, the function of a graph, and we want to find local stuff and global stuff. The way it works, when you have to find these things visually, you, you just have like to kind of walk on your graph and just look around and decide if there's any points where we have local min, local max and global min, global max. Actually, when I do this, I always start with the local stuff and then I check for the global stuff. So here, if you start at the beginning, so if you're at A here and you look at the points around A, so there's only points here on the right side and all those neighbors on the right side, that little branch here is above that point A. So A is an example of a local 
um, minimum. So A is an example of a local minimum. And then what happens? Well, then your graph is going up. So this is what we'll call increasing in a moment. So it's going up, it's going up. And then you're reaching the top of that mountain here at B. And when you look at the neighbors, so at B here, when you look at the neighbors on the left side or on the right side, they're all below that point. So B is an example of a local maximum. And then we continue walking the graph here. We're going down. This function is actually decreasing. And then we're reaching the crack here and in the crack. So we're going down. And then in the crack, what happens in the crack? Well, if you look at that point and you look at all the neighbors on the left side or right side, they're all above that point. So C is another example of a local minimum. Then the function is going up again, up, 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 up. And then it's reaching the top of that tall mountain. And then when you look at the top of that tall mountain at that point here, of course, all the neighbors on the left side, all the neighbors on the right side, they're all below. You're on top of that little mountain. So here the point D is an example of a local maximum. It's actually going to be the global maximum, but I'll make that remark uh, in an instant. So, and then the function is going down, whee, all the way down to that bottom of that valley here. So at the bottom here, we have a point where all the neighbors on the left side all the neighbors on the right side are all above the value of the function at E. So E is an example of a local minimum. And then finally, the function is going up again to reach that final point. So at that final point, we only have neighbors on the left side. They're all below. So G is an example of a local maximum. And now what about global stuff? So for global stuff, you know, you just need to scan your, your graph, you know, from um, vertically, the lowest possible value for that graph here is, of course, A. And since, um, and, and there's no other point that is uh, less than A. So A is an example, is D a global minimum for that function? And then the highest possible value is here at D. So D is the greatest value of that graph, the highest value of that graph, so we have a global maximum. So here again, this is simply done by inspection. Okay, so you just walk on your graph, you try to find those little points that are on top of mountains or at the bottom of the valley, and then try to decide if they are local min, local max. And then for the global stuff, you just are seeking for the absolute biggest value and the absolute smallest value. Let's do more example. Let's find local min, local max, global min, global max of the following functions. I'll do two more and you can practice uh, two more on that, on that page. So first function here that I call f in my first example. Um, so we start at the beginning here at zero. So when you look at this point, it only has neighbors on the right side. These neighbors are above the value of the function at zero, so zero is an example of a local minimum. And then, so let me just write that down. So zero is an example of a local minimum. And then your function is going up. And then when you reach the top, this is kind of strange, but once you reach the top, the output of your top is actually down here. So this is strange, but when you look at the output here at one and you compare the output with the neighbors, all the neighbors, they are above you. So you don't live on the top of the mountain. You live in a hole, you know, on the top of the mountain. All your neighbors, you know, they can go to the hole and then spit on you. So all your neighbors are above you. So one is another example of a local minimum. So we have a local minimum at one. And then the function goes down. And then it reaches the bottom of that valley. So now we have a more like, let's say, classical type local minimum. If you look at the neighbors on the right, left side or on the right side, they're all above that point. So two is another local minimum. And then the function is going up. Whee! So from, from two here, the function is going up and reaches that high point at four. So at four here, we have neighbors on the left side, neighbors on the right side. All those neighbors are below. So we have an example of a point that is a local maximum. This local maximum is actually going to be the global max in a moment. But for now, I'm just doing the local stuff. So here, four. 
uh, is a local max. So global max and global min are, of course, also local because it satisfies the condition given by the definition. Anyway, so then from 4, the function is going down, reaches that crack again. So when you are getting to that crack and you look at the neighbors, left side and right side are above you. So at 5, we have another local minimum. And now the next one, 6 is a bit tricky, but let's study it carefully. So at 6, you're here, and you look at your neighbors. So at 6, you're here, the neighbors on the left side are below you, and the neighbors on the right side are really below you. Okay, so they're like, they can't you know, even reach you. So if, you're, if your house is built here at 6, the neighbors on the left side, they can come and reach you, but the neighbors on the right side, they're in the wrong neighborhood. You know, they're not going to come to your to your party. So here... Uh, the point 0.6 is an example of a local maximum, and then the function goes down all the way up to 7, but there's no point at 7 here, it's a, it's a hole. So 7, here you don't look at neighbors because there's nothing, it's, if a point is not defined, uh, it's not a min or a max, okay, so it's nothing, it's undefined. All right, what about global stuff? So here, the function has one global maximum i'll do it in red here so here this point here at four the function reaches its highest possible value so we have a global maximum at four what about global minimum um well the lowest possible part of that graph would actually be that that hole here but of course what happens now is that this um this this value is not this the function here is not defined at that value so when the lowest possible part of a graph is reached at a hollow dot or a hole there's actually no global minimum for that function another way to say this is that when you find local min if there is a global min it's going to be among the local minimum and when you go through the local minimum so we had a local minimum at one a zero, sorry, we had a local minimum at one, we had a local minimum at two, and a local minimum at five. Well, there's part of the graph where the function is actually below these local minimums, so they're not the lowest possible values of that graph, so they're not going to be, so that's why there's no global minimum for that function. All right, next example. All right, next example. So we're starting here at zero. Function is not defined, though, at zero. So no min or max. If there's nothing, there's nothing. Okay, and then the function is going down. Wait, so decreasing. And then at two, what happens at two? This is a very interesting point. It's also a sad point. So at two, you don't, you're not at this, at this hole. You're down here. So when you look at the output here, it's very interesting. So the output is here. So when you look at your neighbors, you know, they're really, really above above you. So not only are you like not down there at the bottom of, you know, like the valley, you're in a hole at the bottom of the valley. This is also known as a bob point. You know, like when you live at the bottom of a valley, in a hole at the bottom of the valley, <laughs> that sucks. That really sucks, man. Anyway, so um, so two is my first uh, local uh, minimum. So we have a local minimum at two. And then the function is going up and it's reaching the top of the mountain there. Uh, so all the neighbors on the left side and right side are below. So here three is an example of a local maximum. Then the function is going down. So from the top here, function is going down to that crack. So if you look at the output here at four, all the neighbors left or right side are above it. So here four is another example of a local minimum. And then the function is going up, reaching the top of that mountain here at 6. So 6 here, all the neighbors, left side and right side are below. So 6 is an example of a local maximum. And finally, the function is decreasing to the end point. Now it's defined here. So when you look at the output at 7, there's only neighbors on the left side. And they're above it. So... Um, you're going to say that uh, 7 is a local minimum. What about global stuff? So if we use the, the idea of let's go through all the local max and local min and decide if they are the absolute min or max, when you look at the local max, so here local maximum, we had 2. We had y 
we had x equal 3 and we had x equal 6. But sadly here, the, the one that is the biggest one is at 3, but it's not the highest part of the graph. There's chunks of the graph here where it's above the first local maximum. So there's no, okay, so there's no, um, there's no like global maximum. So I'm just running the empty set. What about global minimum? So if I go through my global, my local minimum, I had one at two, I had one at four, and I had one at seven. And here I can see that the one at four is actually the lowest possible value. And it's the only one like this. So there's a global minimum and it's at X equal four. Just a small remark before finishing those examples. Um, you always give the answers with respect to X. So when we ask you to find local minimums, local maximums, global minimums, or uh, global maximums, the answer is always with respect to X. All right, so this will end the first video for uh, that section on local minimums local maximums, global minimum, and global maximums, um, and how to find them uh, visually on graphs of functions. But for that video, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye, love.